Hello, it's Gareth. Welcome to the Father's Sons Brothers podcast. I'm hanging out today with Brian Jenkins, who, if you haven't been noticing, has been all over the Father's Sons Brothers community. He's been a level up partner in the circle. He showed up in another King Circle to talk about what we're going to talk about today on the retreat. Mm. And really what we're going to be getting into today is, are you prepared to climb life's second mountain? Brian from Spain, how are you, brother? Oh, I'm doing amazing. Um, and I, I feel like I want to use a better word than amazing, but just for lack of vocabulary and speaking too much Spanish on this side of the world, I'm doing amazing. Happy to, to dive into this and pull this apart. <laughs> Let's start with the first question. What yes. on earth is life's second mountain as you understand it? Like what is this as a theme for men in their lives of their second peak or their second mountain? Yeah, second peak, second mountain. Um, so it feels like, actually, I, I don't even know this, but today's my birthday. So I turned 41 today. Oh. Oh, wait, and... stop the clock. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> <laughs> you wait for me to go live and then you just drop it in there. <laughs> Shit. Yeah, it's just a proper to bring up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Happy birthday, brother. Fuck. Yeah. So, oh. so, so, of course, perfectly what we're doing, we decided to, to put this creation onto the world today. Um, and, and second peak feels fitting. In regards to what a lot of people look at, like the 40 mark is going to like the second half of life, you know. Um, now, that's what feels alive for me at, at to one extent. But really, you know, when I drop back into what you and I, I have been creating, uh, Gary, for the past six months now and this this retreat, it's to me, it's the second peak of any stage of our life. It could be a professional peak. It could be a romantic peak. But it's almost like something bigger than that, like that calling that caused that first ascent Right. And then once we got there, we had the glory. We got to be able to check out all the views. Um, and now it's like, OK, what's next? And so I think I'll, I'll leave it there to to not steal all the magic. But for me, that's what the second peak is. Mm, yeah, I love. First of all, happy birthday. And thank you for oh, doing this on your you. on your special day, brother. I, I didn't have your birthday in my diary. And uh, yeah, Shame. feels good to drop it in. person. <laughs> Yeah, I think what you've been working on is actually recognizing that for, for men in the middle age, middle stage of life is this uh, recognition of what the first peak is. Like most most men who have gone about their, their work and put in the effort are probably at a stage of their life where they've had some commercial success, relationship success, showing up in the world in, in a way that they want to and um, created something meaningful, have got to the top of the first mountain, maybe ticked a few boxes that made your parents happy got the wife, got the family somehow, but there's the sense that there's still a lot of life left in front of you. And what's next? Like, what is it that you're really being called to? And this is the second peak idea of, you know, what it is that I'm really going to do with the second part of my life, which comes with some gifts, you know, the experience of having climbed the first peak. Yes. I know for me at this stage of life is like, I've been through some shit. I've had my ass kicked. I've had my, you know, my heart broken. Like I've got that wisdom already as part of me. And I feel like it's a, it's a powerful place for men to step into this second peak phase of their life. So question for you is what do you, who's this for? Like, how does somebody know if they're, they're thinking about their second peak? What is, what's the, what are some of the indicators in someone's life to let them know that they're potentially looking at their second peak? If I were to go for the, the low hanging fruit, um, I would say you're listening to this right now, right? Something about the title, something about actually listening to this podcast you're already asking questions about how to get more out of your life. Not for me, not for Gareth, not for your father, not for the gurus, but for you. You already know, have a sense of what that is. And so right now, as, as, as Gareth have, have, has mentioned about already going through some successes, you're at the stage where you kind of feel this fire in your belly. You almost feel a bit anxious, you know, not, not overly anxious. You're falling apart and you're rattled all the time, but you almost feel like you can't keep still and you're not really sure where to put the energy. I mean, there may be, even be a plethora of ideas. You're just not sure which one, right? Mm -hmm. well, I, I, I only have another 40, 50 years left. So what do I do with this time, right? right? So I think that there's this little uneasiness, but also in there, you may even get this, this nudge that's not going to feel good. That may even feel um, like a frustration because somewhere yeah. here, you know that you haven't honored it. And we're not going to judge the why. Right, because I know I'm good at judging myself of why I'm not honoring it the exact same way. But if you even sense some frustration that you're not doing what you are here to do, that's probably another indicator that you're ready for that second peak. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This question comes up sometimes: is like, is this it? 
I often work with men at this stage of life where they've done all the things. And this was true for me. My, my sort of second peak came in my, in my mid thirties, which was like, I was looking at the business that I'd created and it was doing everything well, like it was making money, but there was this nagging sense that like, is this it? And I woke up one day going like, I could very easily project myself ahead in my timeline that I was on and be like, wow, I could still be selling marketing services to similar clients here in Johannesburg in South Africa and I could be 60 and I'm 35. And the only thing I could see that would be different is maybe the size of my business and the level of right. my stress. Right. But the sense that I sat with this question of, is this it, was really like, it was gnawing. It was, it was really feeling uncomfortable for me. And yeah, that frustration that you speak into, yeah. it, it, doesn't, it doesn't go away, you know, until you really step into something. You can ignore it for a while, but really it's, it's life trying to pull you in a new direction. And I, without getting too esoteric, I see that as like your soul came here to share some gifts mm -hmm. and the mm -hmm. gifts that you share in your first phase of life may not be the what you need being called to do in your second phase of life. And yes. so recognizing what that is by listening to that uncomfortable voice inside you that's saying, what else is there for me to do? is the reason that um, you're potentially at this place of a second peak. So, yeah, I wanted to share that because I know yeah. that's been so yeah. true on, on my experience of like, you know, what else is there is a, is a question that's often true for men at, at this stage of life. Yeah. And, and just before you go off to the second question, I think you really nailed yeah. it. And, and that's really taps into the essence of what we've been calling in. Discomfort and let's get esoteric. Why is that? Because what I've also found, and, and you may find the same thing, is in my age, in my wisdom, I'm less impressed by the tangible external satisfaction. I still get off on it. There's still things I want to experience. There's still things I want to, and I will accomplish. I will have the material things. But there is a deeper esoteric part to me that feels more true of how I want to use my time, my energy, who I want to spend it with, what I want to do with it. And that all comes out of the soul's calling. And that may be your discomfort. Because if you're coming back from a background like, like Gareth and I, we're able to go back and, and get the stuff done. We're able to be, you know, very corporate, follow the rules and be, have to be successful now. And there's nothing wrong with that. But imagine to me going back to do that again in the same way. That's not my calling right now. So it is right. sometimes for me a bit uncomfortable to, to, to trust that calling. It's like, well, what do I do with this? It just feels like a feeling. It feels like, you know what? It's all a feeling. You know, mm -hmm. and so I think like let's get esoteric, let's let's tap into your soul's calling. Like, what's it pulling you towards? Mm, so good. So, how do you see the role of a a tribe of brothers supporting somebody at this at this crossroads in their life? They're feeling this. They're potentially mm -hmm. facing their second mountain. What's the importance of uh, unpacking or trying to discover this this journey with men that you trust around you? Oh, um, invaluable. Invaluable. I've been I've been involved in some kind of men's work for a little over five years now, and I will always be part of some kind of, of men's team, men's space for the rest of my life. That's going to be my commitment, my my daily meditation, my ritual, my prayer, my living prayer. And what I've gained from that, and and you know, like here in the uh, the, uh, the 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 father sons brothers um, group um, that you uh, created here, is there's nothing like being able to be around like minded men who want to see you win, to be yep. able to be around like-minded men who are willing to swing their sword at you from a place of love and from a place of care, right? Because in the, in the outside world, you know, where everything's kind of a bit competitive and we're trying to compete against one another, uh, we're sizing each other up, or sometimes we want to be very nice and we don't want to hurt each other's feeling because I don't want you to be mad at me or whatever it may be. And so I may hold back a truth that may, be, may, may need to be delivered to you. For your best good. And so always being around other men who get that, who understand that, who are willing to ask me the tough, uncomfortable questions to help me re you know, recognize what's in my chest, what's on my heart has been nothing but invaluable to me. And so, you know, uh, you know, that's there's no surprise that we've incorporated that into this retreat as well to make sure that other visionary men, other heart led visionaries in this world are together to be able to get down to a core through line of what we're here to do. Because this second peak, again, it will be nothing like any other you've climbed before. And you're going to need men by your side and in the front of you and behind you to accompany you on that journey. So yeah, it's, it's invaluable. Yeah, my second peak started with a, a long, almost 10 year journey of self-discovery, which I was yeah so blessed to be able to take. Like I got out of my business in South Africa. I had some money from the years of, of building my advertising agency. 
And I got the ability to go and literally climb the peaks. I went to Everest. I climbed volcanoes. I was on this long mission to really find myself because my soul was calling me to do something different. And I didn't have access to men's work. I didn't actually have access to a group of men or a tribe of men that I really trusted. So I made my decision to go out in the world and see what I was going to find. But it really required testing countless modalities, going to transformational retreats, finding the practice of yoga, plant medicine, like a whole number of different modalities that I tested until I could finally find my way into something which happened to include men's work and authentic communication and the role of integrity, which is an important pillar that we talk about in men's work. But it took me a long time to find that. And so you and I were talking about what's the best way we can support that version of ourselves to go through this channel in a way that maybe somebody doesn't have 10 years to go and sit Vipassana, but to really mm. come together and bring the tools and the magic of life path creation by understanding story, but also the sacred brotherhood to be able to support one another, not only for the time of the person going through this transition, meaning getting to see where their next peak is, but also, as you said, to support them on their way up as they claim, sort of climb this next peak is what we've put together for something we've called the Call to Courage Men's Retreat here in Guatemala. So maybe you want to share exactly what that is. Yeah, I, I sure do. And, you know, actually, I want to take a, just a slight step back uh, because I don't want to assume that every man hearing this is going to understand it or can really understand what it means to be in a men's space, what that is. So I want to speak a little bit more into that because I, th I think I take it for granted. So I'm going to go back to my mindset six years ago before I even knew what these spaces were. And so for those of you listening to this, um, when we talk about men's spaces and being together and doing the work together, this is not a, a kumbaya kind of scene. There can be moments of that, but it's not a kumbaya scene. This is not um, a whole bunch of middle-aged men getting together and crying to the shoulder. That's, that's welcome. That's not what it's about either. What this is about is being able to get together. We are able to heal and move past some blockages that we have sometimes emotionally. Sometimes we don't trust other men for a variety of reasons. And that lack of trust that you may have with another man may be stopping you from being able to climb to your next peak. Your inability to fully express yourself, your truth, your authenticity to another man, because maybe there's some fear that he'll judge you. Maybe he'll laugh at you. Maybe he'll reject you. That will get between you and climbing your second peak, wherever that is for you. Mm -hmm. Your inability to be able to be supported, to allow someone else who you trust who cares about you, who understands what your vision means to you and to be, allow him to carry you a little bit will prevent you from getting to your second peak. So just as Gareth said, we brought all these elements together so that way when you are going into this next version, climb that next mountain for yourself, you are fully prepared from the mind, body, and soul level. And having a group, a team, a tribe of men who are with, do, with, here to do it with you and you can trust it's going to unlock so much more in you that you don't even know about. Again, discomfort. We want you to be a little bit in discomfort, a little bit uncomfortable stepping into this space. If this is going to be, oh, I've seen this before. I've done that. Don't come here. Mm -hmm. This needs to, There needs to be a sense of surprise, a sense of element, a sense of expansion that's going to happen for you. If you're coming here flat-footed, like, oh, I'll be a walk in the park, this won't be the retreat for you. There is a, a saying that I've been using as a mantra for my own life, which is that the most successful men in the world understand that the quality of their support determines their capacity. Meaning, yes. you know, we've all got the same number of hours in the day, but how do we manage our energy in a way that really supports us? And some dudes fucking crush it, Richard Branson, maybe for an example, he's running airlines and businesses and health clubs. Like, how does he do it? Like, what is what does he have different that perhaps someone listening to this doesn't have? And I think it's his ability to understand how to manage energy and recognize that his capacity is a function of how much he allows himself to be supported. You can't build an airline business unless you allow yourself to be supported yes. by a mentor, by a coach, by a board of directors, by a team of people, yes. by mechanics, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Your ability to be able to manage that support structure around you and your mission is the capacity that you have to serve your mission. And so, yeah, what Brian said there is build the team of men around you that point to the things that you can't see and that you trust will call you forward when yes. you fall back into limiting beliefs or you have an old story or you have something that's blocking you from really stepping up and climbing the second mountain. That's what this is all about. Yes, yes. And not to be confused with doing the work for you. Because I know if you're like me, that sounded like when I first time I heard that, I was like, I can do it on my own. I don't need one to carry my stuff for me. Yes, this is true. This is not that. 
This yes. is just saying that it's not, you know, the necessarily the weight of the load that we carry. It's how we carry it. Can we help and let that spread that load amongst other men? So that way we go further. We open up more possibilities. We have a, a, a greater scope of vision that we can even imagine because it's how to do it differently. And that's what it's all about. So we created the Call to Courage Men's Retreat here in Guatemala. We have rented a beautiful, badass villa on a place called Lake Antitlan. Yes. <laughs> yeah. On Lake Antitlan in Guatemala. This is where I call home. It's I chose it because it's probably one of the most beautiful places in the world I've ever been to. And I I pinch myself every day when I walk the dog or look out from my gym over this lake, which is surrounded by volcanoes and it's almost like a garden of Eden. And yeah, this land has been so powerful for me on my personal healing journey, including connecting me to men's work and a whole lot of other healing modalities that have really supported me. It feels like it's time for me to share not only the magic of what I've learned and integrated into my own life, which includes men's work, but I also feel that there's some healing and transformational power in this land that I'm really excited to share with other men. And so the Call to Courage Men's Retreat is taking place from the 23rd until the 28th of July, 2024. We will probably have a couple more of these. And Brian and I are going to co-create this together. He's going to come across from Spain and him and I are going to facilitate mm -hmm. a small group. We've got space for eight men. It's going to be 10 in total. So two of us plus eight, eight men that are looking to climb their second peak. And we've tailored this retreat around three important components. And the first component we've worked on is slowing down. And I know this from my journey where I really needed to extract myself away from my life in Johannesburg in order to be able to gain any clarity about what it was that I needed to do because my life was happening so quickly. And I was like, okay, I really need to shift. I'm feeling this uncomfortability. What's my next life plan? But suddenly I've got a meeting and then my life didn't really give me enough space to be able to really listen to what was being called. So slowing down with the ability to be able to listen to what's coming up for us is the first component of the retreat. So that's the first element. The second, as Brian has already mentioned, is around challenge. This is going to require you to stretch yourself. And there's a saying that says, do hard things, have an easy life. Mm -hmm. And the, the hard things are sometimes having a difficult conversation or making a tough decision. Yes. Um, sometimes those hard things are physical things. And I've, I believe that often the physical manifestation of what happens in your life around you is often a reflection of something that has been there for a while. And what I mean by that is how I saw it in my life is the voice that said to me, Gareth, go do something else. You're not loving this anymore. I drowned that out with getting more busy, getting more focused, doubling down on my business, more drinking, more booze, more women to distract myself from this uncomfortable voice. But life wants to pull me in a new direction. And eventually, after four years of not listening to this, I had a complete collapse. My, my health was being yeah, it was up and down. My business was actually failing. And it seemed like I couldn't find my way out. And I needed to have this all fall down in order to really listen to what was being called. So the challenge that we're going to be cultivating in this retreat is healthy challenge that helps you to grow into these three zones. And when we talk about personal growth, there's your comfort zone. That's where you are now. You're not growing very much. You're flowing with your life as it is. Expanding a little bit through healthy um, competition and healthy challenge is your zone of growth. This is where you get to grow a little bit more. But you can also go into the zone of panic, which is suddenly life sends you a, um, a re-traumatizing event to get you to wake up and to really listen. And so the ability to be able to understand that you go from your zone of growth and into out of your zone of comfort into your zone of growth is what we're going to be facilitating. So that's the second piece, challenge. And then the third piece is what Brian spoke into, which is healthy brotherhood, building a tribe of men around you that are going to support you through these five days to help you move through whatever it is that this life second mountain is calling you to do. And also put in place not only your plan for your life, but the support team that's going to support you with your capacity to serve this mission as you move out into the world. So you're going to leave this retreat not only having been through this five-day process, which is luxury, relaxing, taking it easy, reading a book in the hammock, doing something challenging like a hike, maybe some plant medicine, cold plunge, something that's going to get you out of your comfort zone and back into the body. And then also some brotherhood that's going to support you through these five days and the five days, sorry, and the time that you leave from there going back into the world. You'll have a network and tribe of men around you that are going to support you on your way. So yeah, I just wanted to give you the frame of um, what Brian and I have been scheming for the last six months. And it's mm -hmm. it's really feeling like it's landing for me now, bro. 
Yeah, hundred percent. And uh, I love the way you we spoke into that. And and understand this is uh, you know as we just wrap this up, I want to go back to the other overall piece of the transformation. Because to me, this goes to the part of we talk about being esoteric and is it maybe too woo woo or too out there? And I say yes to all that, depending on where you are in your journey. Now, we set this up, we designed this so carefully to optimize transformation. And we we can't say what your transformation will be. That's going to be an individual journey within itself. But the fact that this place is luxury is is it is um, uh, absolutely stunning. And we didn't do it just because we wanted that. We did that specifically because for a lot of us who operate at this level, sometimes it's hard to give ourselves a reward or to give ourselves nice things just because we can, right? So this, this even choosing this place right on the lake with a lake with the, with a dock, right? This beautiful scenery was carefully designed to give you the opportunity to transform and to be able to operate at a different kind of level. Being able to operate with other uh, plant medicines, other supports on the island as well, everything was carefully crafted to support you going into this next version of your life. Because as Gareth was saying, this isn't just about you individually or us as individuals. Because we are visionaries, heart-led visionaries, everything we do is an investment into all the people around us. Your wife, your kids, your clients, your employees, your extended family, your immediate family, your people around you, people you don't even know who are watching you. Gareth doesn't know Richard Branson, but he sure knows his story. So think about the effect that he has on him from watching afar. We are the same way. You are the same way as well. So don't take that lightly. Honor that buzz. Honor that frustration. Honor that call. Honor that sense of uneasiness and channel it into something. And that something could be this retreat. Again, we are calling that vibration in. We are here to cultivate that. You know, this we're gonna have a great time, we have a fun time, and this is gonna be serious work. This is that next peak in life. I, I'm excited about these. My, like my next 40, 50 years, I'm excited about it. A lot of people are like, well, Brian, are you you're 41 now? So I'm like, I'm excited. Like if I did this much, like essentially half of my first 40, like unconscious, kind of like just kind of fucking around, like what can I do with this next 40? I'm like locked in. Mm-hmm. I have brothers with me. Like there's mm-hmm. intention, there's vision, there's mission linked with this. Like, what's this next 40 gonna be? I'm stoked. <laughs> Yeah, I want to sort of, sort of put a little caveat in here, which is I have, what you said now, been very conscious of this 10-year journey that I went on. I, I came up with this concept of lifestyle design, which was I realized how much I loved my life after I made the decision to go traveling. Like I was, I had this, this awful down and this frustrating part of my life that felt uncomfortable. And then I went traveling and my life felt so easy and I manifested money easily and I manifested women easily and I started to love myself in a way that I hadn't before. But now I want to create my life that everything feels like fun and play. And this retreat, as amazing as it's going to be for me, and Brian and I have spoken about this as well, I want to surround myself with men that are doing the work that I want to go paddle boarding with anyway and get paid to do it and make a difference in the world. Like this shit doesn't have to be work and play. This is it for me. This is how I want to live my life. And what would I love to do at the end of July? I would love to spend some time with Brian because we haven't met in person mm-hmm. and I'd love him to come to the lake and we can do some paddle boarding and let's bring eight brothers with us and fucking go on this journey together. That's the jam. That's also why I'm doing this. And I want to own that because it's, you know, there's a part of me like, is that even possible? Fuck yes, it's possible. And it's important. Like make sure the stuff that you spend your time on, your most precious assets Yes. lights you up as often as you can. It doesn't mean you don't have to do a tax return. It doesn't mean that you have to fucking wash the dishes or take out the trash. But where you spend a huge amount of your lifetime and attention, make sure it's on something that you really fucking love. And this is it for me. And so for those that are vibing with with Brian's work, uh, with this podcast and the work that I'm putting out into the world, we're really stoked for the magic that we're going to weave together at this retreat at the end of July. Yes. Beautiful. Beautiful. Well, I think it's a good time to wrap that up. And so, man, if you have any questions about this or women, if you're listening to this, pass this on to a favorite man in your life. Make sure he hears this. Um, and we have uh, not so of the uh, when this is going to be launched, this this podcast episode until the 30th of April, there's an early bird price available. So you right. definitely contact us right now to to make sure you get a hold of that. And again, this is eight spots. We're doing eight intentionally. We don't want a whole squad. We don't want 20, 30, 50. We want eight solid heart-led visionary men who are here on a mission. That's what we're looking for. This retreat's going to sell out. And so 
don't think about this for too long. We've also got a, a payment plan option where you can secure today and pay over the, the next couple of weeks up until the retreat kicks off. The link for the registration page will be below this video or perhaps in the email wherever you received this. And if this feels like it's for you, take a look at the registration page. We've got some uh, the agenda of exactly what's going to happen. We've got some photos of the villa there and uh, an FAQ section, including a space for you to jump on a call with myself or Brian if you want to... <coughs> If you want to have a chat with us, ask us any questions, we'd be happy to jump on a call with you to see if there's a fit. It's taking place in Guatemala. Don't worry about any of the travel stuff. We, uh, we've we got a solid welcome pack that as soon as you commit to coming, we will make sure that you get to Guatemala on time, that you get picked up, get to, uh, here to the lake. Everything is going to be taken care of for you. It's a beautiful, beautiful country in Latin America. Mm. And uh, if this feels like it's jamming with you, I can't wait to see you at the end of July. Brian, yes. thank you so much for the time you've put into this, bro. And... Uh, yeah, it's taken us a little while to get here, but it's really feeling like we needed to go through the, the path that we took to get here, and I'm stoked with what we've created. Eh? Yes, yes, same here. All right, man. See you there. Much love, brothers. Ciao, ciao.